on guys what's going on welcome back to black wall street edu i hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend man it's as hot as all get out here in nola but we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we uh make it happen anyway in this stock market right so i want to talk to you guys today about my what i like to call my island indicator which means if i was stuck on an island this is an indicator that i want to want want to keep in my tool chest all right keep in my arsenal so that that uh, technical indicator is called Bollinger Bands, man. Bollinger Bands. You know, I could talk all day about Bollinger Bands, but I want to talk to you guys uh, more about, uh, you know, what it is and, and um, you know, how you can use it, but now not typically how, you know, I use it every single day. But uh, so when you talk about Bollinger Bands, man, it's an indicator, especially when you talk about two standard deviations, and I'll tell you exactly what that is later on. So they typically have two standard deviations on the outside of the bands, okay? You know, it tells you, you know, about volatility and potential price range of a stock or financial instrument. Bollinger Bands also, you know, is a technical analysis that, that's really, really popular, you know, with uh, a lot of professional traders. So let's get into it and, and, and tell you what these bands do so you can start, you know, putting it into your, um, your trading uh, strategies if you could, okay? So when you look at the middle band, when you look, check out the middle band, typically by default, you know, it's a 20 SMA. You know, it's a 20 SMA, which means that it's a 20 period uh, simple moving average, okay? Now you can always go into your studies and change this up if you click on think or swim, go in here and, uh, and you can notice that the middle band is set up as a 20 period uh, moving average, right? You can change it into exponential, weighted, you know, Wilders, Hall, whatever that, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use. You know, a lot of times I use exponential since I'm a day trader. But if you're going to, you know, uh, swing trade, set it up as a simple moving average. Just keep it exactly the way it is, okay? And um, you can change the color of it if you choose to. Um, and this is dealing with the middle, um, uh, the middle line here. And... Um, just for you know simplicity, you know, just to keep it simple, I made everything solid. But I typically have my outside bands as a dotted band, a dotted line, so that you know it's easier for me to you know kind of keep a, keep an eye on everything. But I digress. We're not talking about that right now. So we're telling you exactly what the Bollinger bands do and what they are. All right. So that's the middle band. So the middle band represents uh, re represents a moving average and specifically. Um, uh, a 20 period moving average okay and um, it serves as like a baseline you know for the band now the upper band is a, is a SMA also but it's a two standard deviation um, SMA and I'll tell you more about that later on okay the upper band is calculated by adding twice the standard deviation of the price in a middle band I know you guys don't know what that is and I'll tell you like I said later on this band will provide indication of the upper band limit price movement based on recent volatility so just keep an eye on uh, just keep in mind that you know the um, Bollinger band is a volatility indicator okay the same thing with the ATR you know it's a volatility indica indicator and they tell you not to use the same kind of indicators on the same chart but I do because they do it differently. A lot of times when you want to get a very, very surgical view of the Bollinger and see exactly what it's doing, if you don't have a big chart, it's hard to see that. So that's when I turn to my ATR to see um, if this thing is moving into a higher volatility state, okay? And I'll probably make a video uh, on the comparisons if you guys want to just leave comments uh like and subscribe and i'll make sure to um make another video if you guys are interested in looking at the comparison of the atr and the bollinger okay so that's the upper bollinger lower bollinger band is also an sma standard deviation the lower bank is calculated by subtracting twice the th standard deviation so the upper band is uh, calculated by adding twice the standard deviation and the lower band is calculated by subtracting uh, the standard, uh, twice the standard deviation price of the middle band, okay? The band provides an indication of the lower limit of price movement based on recent volatility. Now using the standard deviation um, for you know, outside bands, 
is, is a common choice because you know it, 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 get, it tells you a lot of information and, it, and it's approximately 95% of price data in normal, in, in normal distribution. Um, this means that statistically you know the price security is expected to remain within these bands okay 95% of the time so 95% of the time the price movement is 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 uh, is is expected to remain in between these particular bands you know assuming you know uh, you know the behavior of the price is really consistent okay so um, so I mean this is a very very powerful tool when you learn how to use it okay when the price moves close to the touching touching the upper band it, it's considered overbought you see right here it's considered overbought and when the price moves below the upper band it's considered oversold like I tell my brother you know he learned how to master this in, in, in 20 minutes because he, he you know he's a he's a hunter so he just tells me okay what where do I find the hunt where do I find the deer where do I find the bear so the only thing I told him just to keep it simple because he was just learning how to trade I said the nature of the stock in the Bollinger Band anytime this thing goes outside the band the nature of that stock it always wants to come back in home always wants to come back home so when you guys do your back testing just to keep it simple you're gonna notice you know that anytime the Bollinger Band either goes slightly outside the band in this case the upper band this thing always wants to come back in you know anytime it touches like playing hot potato it's oversold this thing always wants to come back in and I'm not talking about you know what you guys consider strat movements or engulfing candles and shooting stars and you know tweezer tops and Randy Jackson's and all that kind of stuff you know I'm talking about I'm not talking about you know uh, resistance and support I'm talking about the nature of the Bollinger okay so anytime this thing goes outside typically what it wants to do is come back inside it's cold it's cold let me come back inside so right now we're looking at Microsoft and keep in mind this is not a recommendation to trade stocks you know this is for educational purposes only I'm not guaranteeing you your success uh, for your trades but just realize this is my my uh, then let's, let's go ahead one day I'll okay, actually go behind one day and see if we can find you know the previous day what happened this thing went outside the Bollinger Band came back in you know came back in was considered over sold came back in, you know came back in and I'll get more specific in a minute get more specific now typically what what happens is what traders do professional traders do anytime this thing is uh, in this, this particular example heading up see a green candlestick the first red candlestick that you see you know that closes within going the opposite direction on a reversal they typically get in on the second candlestick okay typically get on the second candlestick you see here um, this thing went outside the uh, Bollinger Band here okay you got a green candlestick that closed within the Bollinger and guess what it rode it all the way up to the top all right rode it. and see in this thing here in this case I would like more green closing outside the Bollinger before I, 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 I wanted to get in but this one in this case it worked out you see the red close inside the Bollinger you had a little pain there and you got in okay so I just want, want you guys to continue to practice this thing this is that close of market and then you never know what's gonna happen at the close of market so let's go one day back and you notice here once again um, on the previous day green candlestick closed outside the Bollinger got a red candlestick closed within the Bollinger took a straight dump red candlestick closed at the bottom line oversold and here you know it was a little painful at, at the minute just to set your stop stop loss even though it were uh, reversed and you would have made some profit here okay like I said uh, get in the second candlestick if you waited for the second candlestick then you wouldn't have gotten in okay you wouldn't have gotten in at that particular time close inside okay get in the second candlestick here you go you know if you're very aggressive whatever and you want to manage your trade you can you know count down five four three two one get in and see what's going on but if you do that make sure you set your stop losses 
manage your trade and uh, so that if this thing continues to head toward the downside, you know, you're out. But if you would have gotten in here, close this candlestick, wrote it all the way up, set your stop loss, and you would have went from 322.53 all the way up to whenever you wanted to take your profit, 323.75. All right, so this is my island indicator. <clears throat> A little more to it, the way I trade it. But I, like I said, I normally like trade it for you know volatility, and um, when the Bollinger Bands are, are heading away from each other, that's a different story. But just want to let you know that hey, you know um, this is the nature of, of 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 this thing when when it's working with the Bollinger, thing comes out of the, outside the Bollinger, closes inside the Bollinger, maybe get in and ride it all the way up to the top. See here, green, over overbought. You got a red candlestick here, a red candlestick wrote it all the way down to the bottom. All right, and uh, if you guys just practice with this and just use this situation, like I said, a, a lot of times I use it slightly different, but you see the same touch the top of the Bollinger, and I'll include these notes also. Uh, the Bollinger band consists of three lines, and, and the nature of it, I'll include it in the uh, description at the bottom and um, let's see you see here close there wrote it all the way down to the bottom if you, even if you would have got into the uh, the stock here I'm not sure if I would have but um, second candlestick you still would have made a profit from 326.16 all the way to wrote it all the way down that's a over a three dollar move 323.31 um, 32331 and you know if you wanted to scalp a little bit you know you could have did a little scalping here you know did some scalping along here and uh, yeah scalp away <laughs> you know me so uh, just want to let release and let that you know this is one way that some traders you know trade you know the Bollinger you know you got the Bollinger at the open which is very choppy and here you go, you got it moving outside the Bollinger. You wait for it, wait for it. And, uh, you know, this would have been probably a, a lost play, depending on, you know, how much, what your pain threshold is. <laughs> so if you got in here, you definitely would have gotten out, you know, around that particular area, even though, you know, it did take a straight dump at that particular area, you know, along here. But, you know, that's one of the Bollinger Band strategies here. And another strategy is when the Bollinger start to, you know, um, go move away from each other. That's another um, strategy I want to teach you guys later on in regards to the Bollinger, okay? So happy trading, man. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. But, you know, like I said, the nature of this thing is anytime this uh, candlestick moves out, it always wants to come back in. You know, moves out, moves outside, you know, it always wants to come back in. You know, took a straight dump, touch the line, and uh, you notice here, this is a trade um, that a lot of prof professional traders would have uh, took into consideration. You know, this thing was oversold, closed inside the thing, got in, rode it all the way up to the top, okay? Maybe, you know, get out anywhere you want, but maybe ride it all the way up to the top. See the second candlestick, roll it all the way down to the the bottom. So that was two trades of the day right there. It only takes, uh, you know, you know, one time to get it right. In this case, you know, you may not have gotten into this trade, but you wait for it, wait for it, and maybe gotten into this particular trade, roll it up, wait for the, candle, the candlestick to move outside the Bollinger, and got into this candlestick here and rode it all the way down. Of course, you had a little wick here, a little, you know, depending on what your pain threshold, don't panic. Just rode it all the way back down. All right, thanks for joining Black Wall Street EDU. Till next time, stay tuned.